Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Who told you that? We are Chicagoans. We got from Who told you that? We is Chicago. Who told you that? Hey, stop. Who told you that? Hey, was you born over there? Who told you that? Was you born over Who told you that? Did you ever see Who told you that, sis? Did you ever see Who told you that? Did you ever see You just happened to be here. Sis, sis, how you doing? You got any questions concerning the Bible? I say what you want to say. But did we cover Israel? Do you have any questions no, concerning the Bible? I understand what happened in Israel, but that day Come in for a second. Go. What does what God have to say about what this? In Israel? Let's keep it a hundred. Yep. Like what's your name? Taisha. Hey bro, what's your name? Don't walk off. What's your name? Come here. What is it? Nick? Nick and Taisha? What's wrong with the west side of Chicago? Too What's wrong with Lundell in, in particular? Where you from? Since 1999 to now, what's changed in this neighborhood? Nothing. Nothing. It got worse. It got worse. Why do you think that is? Has it got better or has it got worse since 1999? You know since 1989? Since 1981? Why? Why? What part do our people have to play in that? We ain't gonna we ain't gonna put nothing on the devil. We ain't gonna put nothing on the white man. We gonna put it on us and see what we had to do with our community looking the way it looked. What part do we have to play in it? You know what's different now? It's a few new buildings that it got built, right? Some it, who owns those buildings though? Why? Uh, because they bought it. They Give me Zephaniah one. You ain't gotta go nowhere. It's the word of God coming out. We trying to fix our communities. They was intelligent enough to, to own the building because they want to move closer to downtown. They want to be closer to where the fuck they work at because they the one got out of out of out of all the out of a sense out of all the dope that's been sold up and down Roosevelt, out of all the dope that's been sold up and down Chicago Avenue. How come we don't own nothing around here? They deprived us of reading, learning, writing. We can read now. Since you can read, right? You can read. So, so what's the problem now? We can read. So, what's the problem? Give me Deuteronomy 28. I like that. You said we too lazy to do it. But you sound like when you was talking to my brother, you got some understanding of the Bible. You got it all. You literally got it all. Okay, I don't have it all. Thank you, sis. You being honest. You being honest. Where did you learn that information from about Christ? Who taught you that? Who taught you that? Yourself, just by reading? I literally wanted to know. You want to learn more? About our people, why we don't own nothing? Why they sell dope up and down our streets and we still don't own nothing? You want to know more? Well, I'm going to tell you this. You said God did it to us. Is the reason why we don't own anything, why the reason everything's still the way it is, right? Let's see. Let's see what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. It's going to happen. This is a future prophecy. Moses is talking to the children of Israel, right? Listen what he's telling the children of Israel. It shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. You hear that, sis? If thou wilt not hearken, Gabriel, tell us, sister, if thou wilt not hearken, Moses telling the children of Israel, if you won't listen, what's going to happen? Unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. To observe, to do the commandments. Not just listen to them, know them. We have to do the commandments. Well, how can we? Read. And his statutes. That's the fight. That's the condition of the battle. That's the condition of the battle. We are made in weekly flesh. Christ came in weekly flesh, and he showed us that even in this flesh, we can overcome. We can overcome these, these temptations. We can overcome the temptation to shave our beard as a man. You can overcome the temptation to do what? Show your body. You can overcome the temptation to get high. We can overcome that. That's nothing. That's easy. We just don't want to do it. I know. Keep reading. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. You hear that, sister? Sis, what's your name? I got Taisha here. What's your name? Monique. Monique, I'm Yokanon. We're going over the reason why Chicago, Londell, 
in particular looks the way it looks. Where we got a few new buildings scattered here and there, right, sister? You from around here? What part? Right here, all up and through here. Right, you seen buildings come, you seen buildings go, right? And we went over and we asked who owns those buildings, right? Who, who owns those buildings? Hold on one second, sis. Sis, we asking why our people don't own those buildings. Because we're too lazy. My bro, my bro, my brother. We trying to figure out why our people, like she said, are too lazy to come together and own the west side of Chicago. Since the 80s, even before then, we've been slanging dope all up and down Roosevelt. And we don't own nothing here. Why? Why don't we own anything here? That's a question that I'm putting on the table for you. What's your name? Antoine. Antoine. Hey, bro. We got Taisha and we got Monique. Same question I'm posing. Why we don't own nothing here? You think God don't love us? God don't love us. That's why we ain't owning nothing, right? You think God, you think God love us? You know he loves us, but why are we still in these conditions if he loves us? Because we put ourselves in these conditions. Let's read. Let's read. It was already told that this would happen to us. This could be prevented. It, it is preventable, the conditions that we live in there, right? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. A lot of us don't even want to listen to the word of God. We out here reading the Bible. And he said, if you would not hearken or listen to the Bible or the laws that's in the Bible, what's going to happen? To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What did that just say? Bro, what did that just say? We're cursed. What did that just say? We're cursed. No, 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 no. It didn't say we're cursed. He, who, who, who he talking to? The people that don't listen. Who is he talking to in here? Everyone. Who is he talking to? Everyone. Everyone. Read it again. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Listen, bro. Listen. He spoke it to who? So what who did he speak to? You, you got a hey, you you hey, you got a good attention span, but you you stopping him from learning. My brother, come and learn, come and learn. Listen, hey sis, check this out. Read. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So we talking to the children of Israel, right? We're Some Israelite. things. We're not who? Israelite. Who told you that? We are Chicagoans. We got from Who told you that? We is Chicago. Who told you that? Hey, stop. Who told you that? Hey, was you born over there? Who told you that? Was you born over there? Who told you that? Did you ever see Who told you that, sis? Who told you that? Did you ever see You just happened to be here. Sis, sis, how you doing? You got any questions concerning the Bible? I said what you want to say. But did we cover Israel? Do you have any questions concerning the Bible? I understand what happened in Israel. But that damn Coming for a second. Chicago. What does what God have to say about this? To Israel? Let's keep it a hundred. Yep. Like stop that talking happened on his earth pagan ass to book. his people. That's Why did he allow that to happen? Book. He love us, don't he? God didn't make shit. He God love us, right? Make, make he love us, right? Why would he dirt. allow that to happen if he love us? And animals. God didn't make this shit. All this shit is man-made. Why? Fuck do you mean? We don't like, need to. We don't need. What's pain and suffering for? We don't need that. Right? God why do we why do we is, experience pain and suffering? I can't because he on the he on the microphone. So I ain't got a voice. God didn't make this shit. God created it. So you don't know the answer for sure. So that means you got a question as to why that happened. He didn't create all everything. He didn't create this concrete. He didn't create these restaurants. Yes he did. No the fuck he didn't. Man. Do we still suffer from these conditions? Not physically, okay. Well, how? And what? Mentally? Okay. Well, why does God allow that to happen to us mentally? God gave the devil a thousand motherfucking years. A man created a book. What book? That pagan created that Bible. Say it again. Where's the book of Mormon? Where's the book of Say it again, sis. A man created what book? But no, I know you. You said you in church. 
Yeah. What church you go to? What did you talk about? Because I want to know what you know. I want to know what you've learned. I want to know if it lines up with what we're teaching out of here. Because if it's not lining up with what we're teaching out of here, you might be following some unbelievers. How do you tell if you're following a non-believer? You can feel it. So, how do we get to the kingdom of heaven? So, a person who teaches the Bible should teach you how to get to the kingdom of heaven, right? We can't be here forever, right? We can't be stuck in the bottom forever, right? We can't be stuck suffering from these conditions that we suffer from, right? Nah, so eventually we're going to have to bring forth the kingdom of heaven. And how do we do that? A teacher who teaches the Bible should teach you how to bring forth the kingdom of heaven. Yes? So how? You say you go to church and you study how? You don't know. Do you know? So how? Ministry? What do you mean? What, what, what does that mean? If, if you tell him ministry is how you get to the kingdom of heaven, do you know what that means? Ministry is teaching. Is that it? So we have to teach? What do we have to teach? Let's read. Uh, go ahead. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right now, you can ask me a question, absolutely. But let me continue answering that question real quick. What we're going over right now is how to get to the kingdom of heaven. Right, bro? Bro, what's your name? Red hat. Red hat, what's your name? What's your name? Travel. Travel. what's your name? Ishmael. All right, Travel and Ishmael, that's all right. Go ahead, go ahead. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? Why are you calling me good? Read. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. If you would enter into life or have everlasting life or get the kingdom of heaven, what should you do? Keep the commandment. So that's how we get into the kingdom of heaven. How? Keeping the commandments. What are some of the commandments that we should be keeping as a people? One of the commandments is thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Is there a lot of hatred in Chicago? Is there a lot of hatred on the west side of Chicago? Where you from? From the west side, from Londell? Where from? Henry Hornets? Okay, it's the same. No matter what part of Chicago you go to, it's a lot of hatred, right? How do our people solve hatred? How do they usually resolve conflict when it comes to me hating and you hating? Like say if we got a hatred towards one another, how does that usually end? That's ideally, but right here in Chicago, how does that usually play out? We could, but how do they do it today? How is it normally done? By violence. That's not the way. Let's listen to what the Lord says. This is how we're going to get into the kingdom of heaven by applying this. Give me Leviticus 19. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You hear that? The Bible says, do not hate your brother in your heart. Your heart is actually your mind. Do not hate, but instead do what? Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Instead of hating your brother, you're supposed to correct them. Right? It's a lot of things our people do that causes us to feel a certain level of disgust or disdain towards them. Right? But the Lord said instead of hating them for the things that they do to you, correct them. Right? Tell them what their faults are. What we're going over right now is conflict resolution. Our people don't understand what that means. Our people understand pick up a gun and shoot each other. But you got to learn this. What's your name again? Ishmael, Ishmael. Do you know about the Bible? Have you ever heard us teach before? You never seen us on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, okay. We, yeah, that was a while ago. So, you've heard this information before that you're an Israelite. What tribe are you from? They told you? What did they tell you? What is your father? Is he an African American? Is he a, a Haitian? He's African American. What was his father? Puerto Rican. So that means you are a, you're a Puerto Rican. 
You are whatever your father is. Let's go to Numbers. How you doing, sister? I'm all right. Let's go to Numbers chapter one. Check that flyer out, though. All right. You heard us once. You've heard us twice. Hey, the Lord don't call, he don't call too many times, bro. All right. Check us out. We got information on the back of that flyer. What's your sister? What's your name? Melanie. Melanie. You got any questions concerning the Bible? No. I just I see y'all a lot. You see us a lot. So um, you just wanted to come and see what we was teaching. Right, we're teaching our people their nationality according to the Bible. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the true Israelites according to the Bible. We, for our rebellion, for our disobedience, were taken into captivity, brought into various lands. Right, the Bible in Deuteronomy 28 specifies that certain curses would happen to the children of Israel. That they would even lose their mind. They wouldn't even understand who they were in the last days. And that he would show people, shalom, and that he would show people in these last days who his chosen are. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 37. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. You hear that? The Lord said one of the curses that will befall the children of Israel, because this is, this is who he's talking to in the book of Deuteronomy. Moses is talking to the children of Israel coming out of Egypt or captivity. He's saying, if you don't follow my commandments that I'm giving you, you're going to suffer curses. We found that our people suffer various curses. The children of Israel suffer all sorts of curses. This particular curse said what? Thou shalt become an astonishment. An astonishment. A lot of people, contrary to popular belief, understand who the true children of God are. And when they see the children of God behave in the way that they behave, they look at them like, good God, I cannot believe that those are the children of God. It's astonishing to see our people on drugs. It's astonishing to see our boys who are lively go to school, and by the time they get into the fourth grade, they lose interest. Right? Because no one's pulling out of them greatness. They're expecting negativity from them. My brother, Shalom, how you doing? Good, I'm all right, I'm all right. What's your name? Fonzel. How old are you? 19. What do you want to be when you graduate college? You're going to be a construction manager. Is there a lot of men in your neighborhood going to school to be anything? Huh? No, why? Why is that? Because right now, what we're going over is we're going over the curses that was stated to happen to the children of Israel. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? We're going to read some clues. And according to these clues, these clues are going to point to you to show you who you truly are. Right now, we're going over some of the astonishments. One of the astonishments was our education would be lacking. We wouldn't know who we are in these last days. If I asked you, what is your nationality, what would you tell me? African American, where did that come from? Sis, how old are you? 50. When you were 10, what were we calling ourselves? We were calling ourselves black. When did we start calling ourselves African American? In the 80s. How old are you? 19, I'm 42. I'm older than my nationality. That can't be right. I can't be older than my nationality. So that's a curse. That's an astonishment. It's astonishing that these people are so destroyed that they don't know who they are. We call them anything and they accept it. So why did you accept that you're an African American? Where did that come from? It was said before you was born. You never thought. Hmm. Africa and America, but where at in Africa? Before we were African American, we was Afro American. We were colored. We were black. We were Negro. Why? This is why. We're going to continue to read the Bible. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb. You hear that? A proverb and a byword. A proverb is a wise saying. You want to hide anything from a Negro? Where are you going to put it? In a book. You have some from a Negro, put it in a book. Black people love chicken. Black people love watermelon. We're known by these different wise sayings, right? If I say, 
If I say, watch out for that Puerto Rican, because he might cut you, what am I saying? Have you ever heard that before? They, they, they keep knives. You've heard that before. That applies to them too. They have proverbs uh, attributed to them too. My brother, a black man will nine times out of ten when he go to school not go to college and will not finish college. That's a proverb. We're known by these wise sayings or these what, just, what, 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 stereotypes. That's the word I'm looking for. You read my mind. We're known by these different stereotypes. That's astonishing that we're known by these things. Baby mamas and baby fathers. That's a proverb. It's astonishing that we will lay down with a sister. We trust her enough to run raw in her, but we don't trust her enough to spend the rest of our life with her. That's astonishing. That's our people. You got any, you got any, you got any children? All about the same mama? You married her? That's astonishing. According to the laws of God, we're supposed to raise our families up. It's supposed to be one man and one woman. It's astonishing that two men will lay together and think that's okay. That's astonishing. We've, as a whole, as a nation, we've accepted those things. The Bible said that we would become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. He said he's African American. What are you? What's your nationality? African-American. You're African-American. What about you, sis? Okay. She don't know. Why are we saying all these different things? Why? God said we would say all these different things. Give me Isaiah. Read. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. The ox and the ass, two very unintelligent animals. Right? But what did they say about the ox and the ass? He knows his owner and he knows his crib. We don't know our God. We don't know our owner. We don't know who made us. We worship a false image that they gave us. My brother. My brother. We worship a false image. We don't know who our God is. We think this is our God. We think this is our Savior. But the ox has one up on us. He knows who his owner is. The ass know where his crib is. You take an ass 20 miles away from his house, he's gonna come back to his home. We don't know where our we don't know where our home is. Where is our home? He said Africa and America. That's confusion. That's not where our home is. Breathe. But Israel does not know. You hear that? You African Americans, you don't know where you come from. The Lord said Israel don't know where they come from. Israel don't know who their God is. You hear that? The Lord saying you're Israel. You hear that? You know you're Israel? Listen, the ox and the ass got one up on us. That should make you feel astonished that a dumbass animal got one up on you. Ain't that astonishing? So we go back to Deuteronomy. We see that that curse has came full circle. It's an astonishment that we don't know who we are and where we come from. Right? And thou, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Wherever we go in this earth, we're known as niggas. We're known as African American. We're known as thugs, pimps, baby mamas. We're known as goons. We're known as whatever it is that they tell us we are. But we never call ourselves what God called us. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.